So this is the Moscow Times, which was created in 1992. We were full of things that hadn't existed before, like a German supermarket with Italian wine. This was something absolutely revolutionary for these Russians. They, you know, they hadn't seen that. My name is Meg Borton, and I'm a journalist based in France. The Russian Parliament building, after tanks opened fire on it, uh, it was during the coup against uh, Yeltsin, undoubtedly the most dramatic moment of my time as editor. I had reporters out there under fire, and uh, it was very hairy for a while, but thank goodness everyone survived. It was scary, it was a real challenge, but what journalist could pass up the chance to create a newspaper, and especially in an environment as exciting and challenging as Moscow in those days? In fact, Russia's first independent newspaper in English in the history of the country. I was born in New York City, but as fate would have it, my parents moved to Wisconsin when I was small, and I grew up in Milwaukee, the Milwaukee area, Mequon, and when I turned 17, I went off to Madison. For me, it was not a difficult choice. Both my parents had gone to school there. They not only talked about Madison, they and their friends would get together and start singing the songs. <laughs> you know, and they would tell us bedtime stories about Bucky Badger. When I was at the University of Wisconsin, it was at the end of the 60s, I was thinking more of being an interpreter because I did have a gift for language. I speak several languages, two of which I studied at the University of Wisconsin, and that was French and Russian. Allez, Bucky! Davai, Bucky! <laughs> Go, Bucky! <laughs> what was fabulous, I thought, about the University of Wisconsin was that it was a place where it was wide open. You didn't have to specialize when you were young. And as a result, I took just a very wide range of courses without ever actually studying journalism. There was a lot of politics in the streets and on the campus, a lot of protests, the Vietnam period. And I have to say, as wonderful as the university was in the classroom, I learned nearly as much on the streets in those years. In my senior year, I went over to the Daily Cardinal and said, well, you know, could I work here? I thought that might be fun. So that's where I had my first job in journalism. I wrote headlines and was sort of a copy editor. And again, when I left there, I never thought that I would end up as a journalist. But fate smiled on me, and I lucked out. A small English language newspaper run by Americans had started up called the Paris Metro. I went over there, and they gave me a chance, and that led to my entire career. But basically, this has been my home base ever since. From there, I was able to get a job at Reuters news agency, the British news agency, in their Paris bureau, so suddenly I was a correspondent. Of course, they took a look at my CV, and they said, aha, you've studied Russian. We're gonna send you to Moscow. And I wasn't so sure about that. And that was another incredible experience because uh, we saw this country that had been so closed and secretive open up and people start to learn to be free. Paris opened a universe to me. It's beautiful, it's cosmopolitan. The way people think here is slightly different than in the States, so you were understanding the world in a whole new way. Having had a general education was the thing that prepared me most for journalism. And that's why my experience at the University of Wisconsin was so important. It set me on the road, it prepared me to be a person of the world. And indeed, I became a person of the world. It set me up. <laughs>